Western influence over the world is a giant Ponzi scheme. All the time, we hear, you must, you have to, we're seriously warning you. Who are you anyway? What right do you have to warn someone? Maybe it's time you got rid of your arrogance, stopped behaving that way towards the world. It's time to drop this thinking from the era of colonial rule. That era is long over and will never return. We have always tried and are trying to offer solutions that take into account everyone's interests, but our interlocutors in the West seem to have completely forgotten that there are such concepts as reasonable self-restraint, compromises, readiness to give in something in order to achieve what is acceptable to everyone. Everyone realizes that in an international system where arbitrariness reigns, anyone can be under attack simply for the reason that this or that country was not liked by the head who has lost his sense of proportion and, I would add, his sense of reality. Unfortunately, we have to admit that our counterparties in the West have lost their sense of reality. Adherence to block approaches, the desire to drive the world into a situation of constant confrontation between use and them, is a vicious legacy of the 20th century. It is a product of Western political culture. The West always needs an enemy. We have always been against this and our position has a serious basis, because NATO expanding to our borders directly threatens our security. NATO is, in fact, first and foremost, a tool of U.S. foreign policy. We will expand our interaction with China in the security sphere. We're not creating any blocks against anyone, but we are forced to react to what is happening around our states. The G20 was once created as a platform for discussing economic rather than political issues. Politicization of the G20 is simply a sure path to its self-liquidation. Of course, those countries must be represented in the UN Security Council that are acquiring great significance in international affairs and, due to their sheer power, can and do influence the way key international issues are decided. Числу жителей наших стран, а что оно большинство, имея в виду перспективы своего развития. Что касается непосредственно, во-первых, дружеский характер, конструктивный и взаимовыгодный характер. Они развиваются на основе равноправия и взаимного учета интереса в Латинской Америке. Пшеница, удобрения, нефтепродукты и многие другие жизненно важные товары. Это вообще наши традиционные рынки на банковского сотрудничества, налаживание новых транспортно-логистических цепочек. Что касается финансовой сферы, вот совсем недавно у нас проходил в Петербурге саммит Россия-Африка. И вот уровень экономического развития этих стран. К чему я это говорю? Я говорю это к тому, что современные финансовые и кредитные отношения выстроены в мире таким образом, что они are the leaders of those countries which exploit perhaps almost all the other countries of the world. They are the ones who uh, uh, guide and to steer the financial institutions of the world. And in the final analysis, and I want to stress this, 
it all looks very diverse and so on, but all these rules which they are governed by uh, are in fact in the service of the golden billion. Also thinking about that now, these lending institutions, for example, they 